not only are we still standing, we're we're looking uh, pretty good here. We're standing tall. Absolutely, man. We're definitely standing tall. I would say the the ordinals and runes price action could be standing a little bit taller, but we'll definitely get into that. Uh, how was your weekend, first and foremost? Pretty good. Doing a lot of touching grass still. Um, went to the beach. Had a, had a little scare at the beach when a shark came close to the shore. Had to get the kitties out of the got out of the water. But other than that, it's been a nice, relaxing summer. I'm getting ready to see what's going on with Bitcoin Nashville at the end of this week. Oh no way! Oh my gosh! <laughs> what kind of shark was it? Do you know? Uh, no idea, but it was it was actually pretty close to the to the shore. So uh, I heard one guy yell "shark." So I just immediately took off and uh, did my Baywatch run and with my high noon in hand and just grabbed my kids and took them out of the water. Oh, man. Who's the host with the most, folks? That's a, that's a good image for you there. Waff running with the high noon Baywatch style. I'm glad everyone's okay. Um, good news that that guy yelled out shark. And speaking of people yelling shark, shout out to Chelsea. Posted him just a minute ago here that the SEC officially approved the spot Ethereum ETF trading for tomorrow. That is right in line with the betting markets. Been spending a decent time over on uh, Poly Market uh, the past week or so, and they had that estimated to go live tomorrow. So there you go. Looks like we might be getting some major crypto inflows. Hard to say, uh, just given that sometimes we've seen ETF be sell the news events, but it is it is official. There's so many bullish things going on, even if it's a temporary sell off. It, I, I don't think it's really going to cause any uh, damage to this momentum that we have right now. Uh, Bitcoin trading at 68K. I mean, we're up 15,000 off the low that we had maybe, what, two weeks ago on around around 4th of July. So we're looking strong. Bitcoin Nashville coming up. I think typically when we get these big events, we tend to sell off after, so maybe we maybe we do kind of uh, run up a little bit more through the weekend, and then maybe by next week we kind of cool off a bit, and then go for the run again after that. It's gonna be uh, you know interesting to watch. It's just so many things have happened since since uh, we last came you know came live to everybody. You know we have Biden residing. You know we got. Trump confirmed as a keynote speaker at Bitcoin Nashville. We've got potentially Elon Musk uh, attending as well. Um, just just seems like very bullish, man. I mean, even if there's some kind of temporary pullback, it's nothing to sweat at this point. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, Waf. I mean, even with the pullback that we saw today, it immediately retraced back to the high of the week. Uh, so Bitcoin back over that 68K range. Um, I know Jake shared earlier this morning that Crypto Don Alt guy who just does a good job of charting Bitcoin specifically, he shared 70K as sort of like a pseudo resistance that's not even really there. So definitely seems like things should be trending higher unless it's a sell the news, in which case, um, you know, maybe we sell off just a small amount. I would say... The biggest thing in my mind in terms of a possible sell the news is expectations of Trump speaking. So, again, you know, a lot of the stuff probability wise, I would just base off of poly market. If you guys haven't checked it out, I know Jake has shared some before while he's looking at odds for uh, campaign and uh, election outcomes. But they have the odd of a Bitcoin treasury or a Bitcoin, Bitcoin fund for the U.S. roughly at like 25 to 30 percent. So, you know, if Trump comes out tomorrow and says that there's going to be an American Bitcoin reserve, I think that just absolutely skyrockets the price of Bitcoin. If something like that were to happen, it would pretty much just set into motion, you know, a global race of Bitcoin. Because if America starts adopting it, then all these other countries around the world are going to do the same thing. Uh, And, you know, you might even see something like China unban it. Who's to say? It's a lot of speculation, no NFA. But I do think that there is a potential that Trump could say something along those lines, you know. Again, not to get into politics, but just seeing the pattern of sort of the things that he talks about. Uh, He's very quick to sort of say, you know, I will do this in a very grandiose way. So I really wouldn't be surprised if he says something about, oh, you know, crypto is so great. It would make America, you know, amazing, blah, blah, blah. 
But again, you know, not to be political, but just thinking in lines of what he has said, what we might be seeing, it's possible he announces this Bitcoin reserve for the U.S., something like that, extremely bullish. I don't think that's fully priced in, just given that the probability is like 30%. However, on the flip side of that, if Trump does not say anything to that nature and, you know, the event comes and goes and all Trump has really said is he's pro crypto, which he's already stated before, uh, there is a chance that maybe there's a sell off off of that if it's underwhelming. So we will wait and see. But tomorrow will definitely be a big day. It's definitely a great idea to have Bitcoin as a strategic reserve, but it's definitely a bad idea to announce it to everyone before you've like uh, accumulated into your position. And then right now, like the United States has two hundred and ten thousand Bitcoin, I think. So out of any sovereign nation, they have the most. But it's but I believe like North Korea is like right behind us. Um, I, I think UK has about fifty thousand, and there's also talk about them selling off. So that could be another kind of uh, headwind, a potential headwind. Um, so I just, I, even though I see it at twenty five percent on poly market, I mean, I'd be, I'd be confident betting no because I just think, like, if I just think of the gold market, like when when uh, countries accumulate gold, they don't really announce to everyone else that they're accumulating gold. They kind of just do it quietly, and I think um, if we were in fact to ever have a Bitcoin strategic reserve. We would we'd wait till we have like five hundred thousand, you know, Bitcoin or a million Bitcoin before we announce it. Not 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 before then. That's a great take, Waf. And you know, it's hard to say what's going on. Obviously, Trump is not the incumbent, so it's probably not up to his discretion at this point to doing that. So, yeah, hundred percent. I think that's a good call. May resolve to know in that case. Uh, in which case, you know, we might see a little bit of a pullback following the news, but. Anything can really happen, and a lot of it as well. I know people are speculating Elon speaking. Um, I haven't seen too many people throw out the counter thought, but the profile picture he changed it to. So for those of you who didn't see yesterday, he changed his profile picture to sort of a laser eyes, uh, which is a big staple of the Bitcoin community. But I will note that, you know, this Biden meme has been going on for over a year now of Biden in that same laser eyed effect. Uh, and he changed his profile picture after Biden dropped out of the election yesterday, within about a couple hours of that happening. So it could be in reference to Bitcoin, but just keep in mind that there is another possibility, which is that that is just sort of a response to Biden dropping out. If it's supposed to be a play on sort of that Biden picture that we've seen throughout the year, it's possible. Uh, so it definitely makes sense in terms of speculation. Apparently, he's going to be there uh, at the Bitcoin conference or like in the same state, at least as Trump. And he just announced that he's going to be pledging forty five million a month to Trump's campaign. Uh, so definitely some incentivized interest there or aligned incentivized interest. He obviously is a huge holder of Doge. So crypto going up would be very beneficial for him. But it is all speculation. And, you know, the more speculation that comes in and you see crypto respond as a result, it just means a lot of that's priced in. So it's, it's really going to be a matter of does the hype from the convention follow through uh, with the Bitcoin price action or was it not really anything new? In which case, I'd say we probably see a slight pullback. I wouldn't expect anything major, but I would expect a maybe a retest of like 65K or something. Yeah, I think all indications are that he probably will be there. I think he will speak. Um, do I think that's enough to break through that 72, 73K resistance and kind of take it to the next level? Not, not quite, because a couple of weeks ago we were talking about, you know, we probably had the summer and then, you know, maybe this fall when people kind of uh, are back from vacations and like really back at work that we'll see movements like in September, October. So I'm going to still stick to that. I do think when we break through resistance, it's going to be a forceful like breaking through. I don't think we're just going to close a week just slightly above a new all time high. I think we're going to like pretty much shatter it. And I just don't really see that happening like by the end of this week or, or the following week. Just with even the fear and greed index is now up to 70. So we're already in the greed zone. We were just in the fear zone a couple of weeks ago. Um, so I think to me, like we're probably at at closer to the end of this short term run than we are at the beginning of it. So I always look for that, R, you know, that RSI reset and then we see like what happens from there. So right now, 68, I think we're back into the range, the 60 to 70 play range that we've been in for call it the last four, four months or so. Um, but with the potential of breaking out relatively, relatively soon. Um, but just to be a little bit 
cautious, I would still be looking more in the September, October time range. Yeah, really great shout there, Waf. I mean, I really love that you refer to the fear and greed indicator. You know, we talk so much about reversions to means. Uh, and, you know, just talking two weeks ago when Bitcoin was below 60K, anyone who really entered in that space got a really nice profit. And to your point of how the 70K, 72K, once we surpass that, it's going to really launch forward pretty quickly. We saw that when we passed 60K, right? We moved with haste back up to 67K. It's really just about crossing those resistance thresholds with uh, strength. And they usually do cross with strength, right? They'll either trickle over and then get rejected or pass through and very quickly surpass it. So I, I'm right there with you. I think if we pass 70K, it probably wouldn't be long. Uh, you know, maybe we have to trudge a little bit to get past 60 or 73K. But I think once we hit a new all time high, it'll probably get pretty close to 80 pretty quickly. Uh, and then depending on the situation where it passes, you know, 80K, we, we could really start flying just depending on what catalysts and news is surrounding that. Uh, milestone. But yeah, for the time being, I think I'll just a lot of crypto has run up very quickly over the past couple of weeks, especially in the alts market. I mean, it, it is pretty crazy. And I want to definitely get your opinion on this. You know, we've seen Solana meme coins absolutely on a tear. Shout out to Daddy Jinzo. He had the conviction in whiff. It paid off for him very well. Uh, we've seen meme coins like Popcat reach a billion for the first time, all time high for that. Uh, even MOG getting very close to the billion market cap itself. So these Ethan Solana meme coins really on a tear. Uh, Bitcoin, however, really lagging behind. You know, stuff like Billion Dollar Cat is selling off even with Bitcoin catching up. Uh, I would say overall in runes and ordinals, we're seeing some signs of weakness. Do you have any thoughts as to why that might be compared to the other two chains? I think it's just purely volume right, right now. Ordinals and and runes are in the middle of like a a bear. It seems like a bear market. Whereas, I mean, so, like you said, Solana meme coins have been absolutely ripping, and also this Solana itself has been ripping, right? So it kind of makes sense. And just the ease of trade on Solana, like the way you can just launch coins, and then these meme coins have kind of made a name for themselves they've been they've been kind of around for this cycle so i think um those are the factors i think solana's like this overall market share um has like increased dramatically during this bull run i think they've they were like one percent of the market now they're up to like three percent um and they can make a serious run at ethereum i, I mean at this point being like the preferred um you know smart contract platform because that's really what they're competing on um so I could I could see that continuing to play until you know attention comes back to to runes and ornals, which right now it's it's not there. Um, it is a bear, right? So it, it you know if you're in the market, you're not making money right now. But at the same time, you can set yourself up for um, the next logical run. Um, if you do, if you have been paying very close attention, if you look at BRC twenties across the last twenty four hours or the or across the last seven days. Um, that that looks like Solana meme coins. The the percent gains in BRC twenties is you know double digits for the day, double digits for the week. Um, so it looks like BRC twenties are just having kind of like their moment now because they were they were down bad for a very long time, and I think Runes um, will have their day as well. Yeah, I agree with you there, Waf. I mean, I think a lot of it is just kind of rotation uh, into different spaces in the market. Definitely seems like BRC20, there's a little bit more ease there. We already know that some major DEXs have adopted them uh, versus the real only runestone that's been adopted by a DEX is Doggo to the Moon. Um, so we're still waiting to see those be a little bit more commonplace. Certainly have the UI, UX um, advancements for trading runestones and you know still just waiting on some major stuff me particularly waiting for magic internet money to be announced by maven's bot i have no idea what he's doing the last thing that he tweeted i think was about june 4th or june 5th uh, it's pretty funny actually it was biden tweeting that he is the democratic nominee uh, and of course he's now dropped out so that's still the top tweet on maven's bot profile is him responding to biden uh, and he sort of did a mock-up of Biden as a wizard and said, like, let me make this clear. You know, I am the deployer of magic internet money, uh, I, and I will be. So now with Biden dropping out, it's sort of like, hmm, you know, is he still going to do it? Is that still coming at some point? I don't know if that's a major catalyst for runes, uh, if it would be or not. It certainly would be a major catalyst for wizard. 
Um, but still waiting on that one, still waiting for some runes that we've talked about here a lot to show some signs of life. But yeah, to your point, I mean, I think if you look at Solana, the reason it's running so much is because it's just the next up on the chopping block, right? <clears throat> chopping block in a good way, that is. But obviously with the ETH ETF, it seems to be more officiated. It really just solidifies crypto and gives a lot of people bullish sentiment for Ethereum. You have an ETF, so you're just going to be seeing inflows gradually over time. We already know that people have filed some Solana ETFs, but it really just becomes the next target of that speculation play. If a Solana ETF gets approved, you're going to see a lot of inflows into Solana. So even at these prices, it seems like its market cap is pretty low. Uh, so, you know, we could see these same mechanics play out with Runestones, BRC20s, just waiting for that rotation into, OK, what is the next big speculation? Seems like Solana just has a ton of that attention right now, as well as altcoins on ETH and Solana, because they're so popular and have so much volume right now. Uh, but we could still absolutely see some of that trickle back into Bitcoin uh, once those other markets have played out a little bit more. Yeah, I think ETH is in a in a funny situation where it's like, what what is it exactly at this point? Is it um, sound money and going to be similar to Bitcoin or is it really... Um, you know, a smart contract platform competing with Solana. It's sort of kind of caught in between. So I think that's why we're seeing kind of the price being depressed a little bit. Although I do think once this ETF flows come in, that will be um, bullish um, long term. And then if if these ETFs uh, introduce some level of um, yield, like from this from staking the ETH, then that that'll be very attractive to um, and you know to clients and. And they'll jump in on that just on on the fact that there's yield. Um, but just going back to runes, even though runes are down, um, Binance came out with like a like a second half year report on crypto, and I just pulled a few nuggets out of it, you know, related to Bitcoin and stuff. And since since runes have been deployed, um, runes represents ninety five percent of the fungible market on Bitcoin, so it it does have like that market dominance in terms of fung fungible coin market on Bitcoin. Um, it's 60% of all transactions on Bitcoin as well. Um, and since it's come, since it's come out, um, BRC, BRC 20s are down about 50% in overall market cap. So I, I do think the future is still runes. Um, you know, we just had like, you know, a mania in the beginning. We're only three months away since, since runes was first deployed. Um, and we're just having this kind of like little down period. And then I just think it's going to shoot right back up. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, totally agree, Wap. It's crazy. You know, time moves differently in crypto. Feels like it's been years, but it's really only been three months. And again, you know, just talking to some people in the space here who were around when Ordinals first came out, the price action was super slow. There was definitely some volume at first, but it really took a full year for things to heat up. Uh, obviously, some of that had to do with the macro trend of just the market as a whole being in a bear at the time. Uh, but now we're kind of back and, you know, I'd say crypto as a whole is still in sort of a bear bull market or maybe let's say bull bear. Definitely the the leading coins of ETH, uh, Bitcoin and Solana for sure in a bull period right now with them looking really strong over the past week. Again, the altcoins are looking very strong, but there's still pockets of crypto where it just doesn't reminisce of the early phases of a bear uh, bull market, excuse me, right? Like we we don't see NFTs really getting that much love. It seems like projects move up for maybe a day, but then consolidate and send back down. So it might be either an advent of a new technology or more com money coming in from other participants that's going to launch it. But again, with major news potentially on the timeline with something like a strategic reserve, you might start to see a lot of people getting into crypto. I could really see a situation where if that happens, we would see the price of Bitcoin go up like crazy. People would start to FOMO in. And if Bitcoin reaches unattainable price levels, as well as Solana, as well as Ethereum, that's when we might start to see that trickle back into stuff like NFTs and some altcoins, maybe some runestones, some ordinals, stuff like that, where the prices are so beaten down, but they could offer some really tasty beta plays once those other coins get, you know, just far beyond reach of a normal investor. You know, last week we saw some random ordinals kind of just going up in volume and you could tell that some people are just accumulating some low entry floor collections. Um, and then we did have a pretty hot mint. Let's talk about Aeons. I think Aeons was a, uh, a successful launch. Um, and I think that that one has potential um, staying power, lasting power. It, the art looks really good. You know, it was a very cheap mint, like a 0. 0.00018 mint. 
it ran up to like 0 0.014 and now we're about half of that right now 0 0.0075 um nice volume nice art w what's your opinion on on aeons uh my opinion is that i'm a dingus for not setting an alarm i had a whitelist shout out to blessed and totally slept through it i woke up at like 8 a.m that day and thought oh i have it and then just didn't realize what time mint was so i missed out um you know I personally think that I'm a little less hyped than other people. I had a really strong feeling that it would break that 0.01 range. Uh, the only issue that I see with ordinals at this point is that you sort of have two classes of ordinals. I think it, it's always been this way. It's just that ordinals are a little less hot than they were when like node monkeys were reaching all time highs and puppets were in like the 0.4 range. Um, but I see projects that I think have very organic hype. And then I see stuff that is part of what I would call the hype machine. Uh, in air quotes. And for me, the hype machine is just stuff where you have a lot of influencers involved. It seems like a lot of the whitelists are given away or botted through influencers. Um, you know, I, I'd say the best example we have is like inked on B uh, BTC, right? Like when that happened, the price went crazy, briefly went to point one. Everyone was FOMOing in and then it just fizzled out immediately after the launch. So with Aeons, I think the art looks great. It's no knock on the art. I do think that the hype machine was there. So I'm really not surprised that we saw, you know, six or seven X the mint price. But for me, looking through the art, and it is dope art, like it's no knock on the collection. It's just like, where is the place in PFPs in today's crypto climate? I just don't really see it as much. I don't think PFPs are as relevant. I think people on Twitter just kind of pick random stuff these days. You know, there still are for sure people who rep PFPs of their favorite collections. Um, but I don't think like sort of like a price begets the profile status thing. So at 0.014, I don't really think Aeons is that hype to rock as a PFP. It doesn't really have that rich flex. I think the art is very cool, but I do think some of the art is uh, somewhat similar to one another. Like if you just scroll through the collection, is there really a lot that differentiates a super rare one from a super common one? Not really. Um, and, you know, I, I am welcome to other people have counterpoints on this one. Uh, I think it mainly just falls into the ordinals are not in a bull market yet. So I don't have the most bullish outlook on them. Uh, but I would imagine this does something similar to Frux with price action, where maybe it goes to 0.01, maybe it peaks out at like 0.02. But I, I kind of see this one fizzling out in a couple of weeks and people getting a little bit bored. I mean, that's probably the most likely outcome. But I, I would say I do like the art. I do like seeing that volume and there was a little bit of hype on it. So to me, that are like some levels of indication that we're getting closer to being back. Obviously, we're not back yet, but it is good to see like volume on on new collections. And um, yeah, and Aeon's had it. So, and I think even now, um, if you look like over the past day, it's still it's still up there for the week. It's I think it's number one for the week, even over seven days. And it just it just came out, you know, a few days ago. So to me, that's that's pretty good. I don't know where the number eventually ends up at. Um, may, maybe it moves up higher eventually. But I do think it's kind of one that's not that's not just, uh, you know, here now and gone tomorrow. I, I do think people are going to kind of cling on to this art. I think I think it's good art. Yeah, it's for sure good art. Um, we'll definitely have to see. I think I think it's weird with ordinals. You know, I was talking to Blessed over the weekend just as he's getting ready to set up for the Bitcoin convention. Um, but we were just kind of talking about like what is art in ordinals? How does it compare to other spaces? Like if you look at the top collections in ordinals, for the most part, it prior to Aeons, it's OMB, Node Monkeys, and Puppets. And like, what do the three of them have in common? The art objectively isn't great but then there's parts of it that like it grows on you and you love it uh but known monkeys it's just pixelated monkeys you know i i love how they look but that's just because i love ordinals and i think it grows on you same thing with puppets i mean the first time i saw them i was just like what the hell is this it's made in ms paint of course grew to love it uh, and then same thing with omb i mean it's just like scrawlings that i think if you showed an ordinary person on the street they'd be like this looks like a six-year-old draw it drew it but it's a very talented artist. Like, end of the day, he has some very cool OMBs in the collection. So it's really interesting with ordinals because I think sort of the traditional what is good art isn't as relevant. Um, so for Aeons, it certainly is good art. Uh, it's just a matter of, like, are the people who are the whales in the ordinals community, are they going to form around it? And I think that's kind of what we need to see is people who collect Aeons are going to start raiding Twitter. Are they going to be really 
you know, promoting Aeons as sort of this community, will it stick? And I mean, I think with Ordinals more than ETH or anything else, it's, it's really just about that sense of community that ties it together. So I do agree with you, Waf. I think the art is very good. It's just a matter of is Ordinals the right spot for this art to, to do uh, its damage? And, and we'll see. Yeah, I mean, even right now, if you look at it, there's 21% of the supply is listed. So you can see like potential even more of a fallback. I mean, again, it did mint at 0. 0.00018. So it's like a 7x from here from mint. So if if it falls back to like a 3, 4x, I mean, that, that sounds about right. Um, and then we'll see what happens after sort of like this, these listings get digested. For sure. But we do like to see it. You know, I, I think what we're really looking for is we're looking for a new collection to sort of join the blue chips of ordinals. Um, you know, Frux was pretty close. I think they got up to like 0.02 something at one point, which was like a 10 or 20 X times mint. I mean, this is still phenomenal, right? It still just shows that there's money to be made in ordinals. So hopefully after the Aeons mint, some people who got whitelist and got to mint will be rotating more money into other ordinal collections, trying to run it further. Um, but I think we're really just looking for something that breaks that threshold pretty quickly. Uh, we can actually go back and talk about the untitled project that um, the Cyberkongs did, right, with Decentralized. That came out, I think that surpassed my expectation for sure. There was a pretty low supply, but that breaking point one, pretty crazy. Do you have any thoughts on that, Love? Oh, so do you recall the uh, criteria was a lot different on last Monday compared to when it launched at, at that point it was supposed to be you were supposed to hold 1 million decentralized and it was supposed to be uh, a mint of 222 and then everything kind of tanked after that and then they came back and made it only a criteria of like a hundred thousand decentralized with only i believe a hundred to mint and um yeah it went to 0.1 i think it's at like what 0.087 or something like that right now um volume's not crazy um I, I'm personally fading it and, and not interested in, the, in in it whatsoever, but it definitely um, surpassed my expectations in terms of price. And I was thinking to myself, like, who's buying this at point one? I was kind of kind of surprised. Yeah, you know, I get surprised with that, too, with ordinals. I see some random collections pop up and I'm just like, not really sure who's buying it. I'm guessing it's some people who have some big bags. It could absolutely be the decentralized team. I mean, you never really know for sure. With 100, it's not that difficult to prop up the floor. Uh, I will say the art looked great. Uh, I really was pleasantly surprised by that. But again, it just kind of brings into question, like, where do the communities lie with these ordinals project? Obviously, there's a ton of stuff that CyberKongs have already put out. So that community already firmly existed. Um, I think they're really trying to like get a larger community by bridging over to ordinals, not bridging, but, you know, expanding the collection over to ordinals. Um, so it's just interesting to see these kinds of experiment and like just going back to your earlier point of runes only being three months old. A lot of this is just the early days of experimentation. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of stuff that they try. It doesn't stick, uh, but it's not to say that it can't come back in a few more months and then pick up. Uh, retroactively. I mean, we've seen that in Ethereum so many times where a project launches kind of duds out and then out of nowhere, the volume picks up and it's the next big collection. So um, it'll be interesting to see once Ordinals goes back into a bull market where we see a lot more volume coming in. Uh, but for now, I think it was an interesting collection, uh, regardless of the outcome. Yeah, and you know what? The art is really good. It is at a 0 0.08 floor. Um, it's traded about 7.3 all time Bitcoin. So Again, I don't know how much volume you're going to see in a collection this small. Um, I don't know what the um, utility or whatever it is you get by holding this Genesis um, inscription is. I guess that's to be determined. Also, with the team, like, have they? I don't know if they've abandoned their ETH projects or it's just kind of like out there. So I, I don't really know. So it seems like they've figured out that Ordinals is like where it's at, comparatively speaking, compared to so some ETH NFTs and they moved over here, but without sort of like a, a blueprint or, or a plan, um, people don't have like that much faith in them, I think. Yeah, we we'll totally agree there. Uh, the other project for us to talk about is Frontline by Asura. I know that's sort of like an art blocks type beat where you can get their pass and then mint some of their other collections. Uh, that was a pretty hype project right behind Aeons, came out the same time frame. And right now that is at... 0 0.000, sorry, 0 0.0013 floor with about 1.37 volume done for the day. Any thoughts on that? 
I minted these in like the first come first serve um, window. Um, yeah, I mean they they look all right. I I I don't really have an opinion on it. Maybe it'll do something like Floriforms eventually, but I, I don't see this pumping or anything like that anytime soon. Yeah, I completely agree with you there, Wow. Also, notably on the Magic Eden uh, chart, are these bold anoles. I saw them briefly on Twitter. Not really sure what's going on there. I imagine it's just a tight knit community. Seems like most of these are. I mean, there, there's very few sales. There is uh, about two point two four Bitcoin in volume for today, so that's pretty decent compared to other collections. But it's really off the back of like thirty or so sales. Uh, and these are selling in like the 0.13 to 0.2 price range. The art is pretty fun. It's nothing crazy. It's just some more pixelated Pepe's. Uh, but I do think the style is pretty cool. I think these are all one of ones in their own right. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty fun collection for sure. I'm not really sure where I'd be a buyer here or how they'll do, but they do have some notable volume today. It's a very small collection though at 100. So with those 100 collections, like we've talked about, it's it's pretty tough to get you know uh, a lure to a larger group of people with such a small size. Yeah, I think on this one, it's uh, art by Bold Leonidas. So if if you're a fan of of that artist, then it makes sense. But if if you're in it to to make some money, then then it doesn't make sense to buy this one. <laughs> Very well said there, Waf. Uh, but yeah, while we're looking at Magic Eden, you know, it looks like the one that's held the test of time, Quantum Cats, tried and true, still at 0.3 range. I, I still think the promise of Taproot Wizards down the line is very strong narrative. Beyond that, it looks like stuff is starting to fall back. Um, you know, it's interesting. I sort of set a few weeks ago the buy zone, at least for monkeys for me, or sorry, for puppets, is uh, like 0.1. Usually once that happens, they go up to like 0.12 or 0.13 is sort of the, you know, flip zone, so to speak. So they're right now at 0.129. Uh, and then also for node monkeys, I think point below 0.15 is usually where I start getting tempted to buy them. And they're right at about uh, 0.16 right now. So those have cooled off a little bit. I know a couple of weeks ago, they were really heating back up. I think puppets reached about 0.16 or 0.17 again. I know node monkeys broke, briefly broke 0.2. Um, but now they're cooling off a little. It seems like ordinals as a whole is just losing a little bit of volume over the weekly charts. Uh, but, you know, it, it's nothing crazy. The, the floors are still somewhat in play uh, in these larger collections. Also, I think we kind of buried the lead on what's going on in runes today. Um, liquidium. We need to talk about Liquidium. And I think also that could have an impact on ordinals similar to the way Blur had an impact on NFTs. Because now you, instead of... Um, basically flooring your ordinal, right? You can now take a loan out on it. Um, if you do default on the loan, the, the, the lender gets your, gets your ordinal, um, you accumulate these points for the liquidity, uh, rune token drop, which also dropped today, I guess the, the first initial supply dropped. Um, it's, it's like probably the number one traded, uh, rune token today in terms of, uh, volume. Um, it's market caps, probably like 30, 40 million or something like that. Um, which is well below, I guess the, um, seed investor. So that's, that's another thing we could talk about. Um, but this token and farming liquidity, the liquidity token makes all the sense in the world to me. Yeah, well, I'm definitely not as well versed on it, uh, if at all. So I would love to hear some more thoughts on just liquidity, um, how we can farm it more and uh, get some exposure, because it, it definitely seems like a pretty low market cap for, you know, what what it could be. So pretty much you there's a bunch of collections and they have all different um, terms and APYs on them. And then you you could set up like offers to create offers to like lend if you're doing the lending side um, tip. So I've been doing the, literally the last few days, like just lending money on people with NatCats lending like 0.01. It's like a 270 percent APY and the term is like for eight days. And then they pay back the loan within the eight days and then you earn the interest as well or if they default on the loan don't pay it, you you get the collateral which is in in this case natcat so this is like my way of either accumulating natcats for much lower than the floor price or just just making some interest off my bitcoin so i'm using that collection because that's that that's one collection i don't mind buying and then also if you look at uh, Bitcoin puppets, quantum cats, and, uh, and node monkeys. Those are probably other collections that um, the terms are pretty favorable as a lender to lend on those collections because 
Um, you never know. Somebody might default on a on a rare one, and then and then you get a rare one. If not, you get some. You still earn some interest with um, some idle Bitcoin, and you're also accumulating points for the next uh, liquidity airdrop, which should be in two months. Oh, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, wow. That definitely seems like good exposure to have. I know you dropped a link there in chat, so appreciate that. I'm definitely gonna look into that more. And I mean, yeah, to your point, if you can get some loans out. Uh, and get some of these collections for way under floor, it seems pretty risk-free. You can always just floor it as well as just, you know, earning the interest otherwise. So that, that seems like a, a huge win. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, if someone defaults on something that you don't want, I mean, the floor price is usually higher than on than the um the collateral the, the what you lended. So the collateral is worth more than the loan, which is so you can imme immediately floor it if, if if you need your Bitcoin back. Uh, so it's, I, I don't want to say it's risk free, but obviously it's um, there's some incentive to lend and, you know, accumulate the points like similar to like a blur environment. Um, my personal like, uh, I guess, preference is just to like lend on collections that you like and don't mind actually buying because I like, don't chase a yield on something um, that you don't want to get stuck with. Right. So. Anything brand new, I'd be like a little, it was a little risky. So I, so going with sort of like the the top tier ordinals and, and lending on those makes a lot of sense. Yeah, completely agree. Completely agree. Um, well, that's awesome. That's really definitely some alpha there. So big shout out to WAF, you know, as always throw WAF some blesses guys. He comes into these every single week with just a ton of alpha prepared. Uh, that one for sure, I got to look into, see what other collections they have to offer. But I mean, yeah, with those blue chips that we always talk about on the show, uh, node monkeys, puppets, quantum cats, like anything like that, where you can get them well below the floor and earn, I mean, that's a crazy APY that you're talking about. So if you can earn that much yield in just a matter of a couple of days, I, I really don't see much of a, again, NFA, but it, it seems like the risk is uh, pretty in your favor for that one. Yeah, so I'm like on the page right now. So if you look at Bitcoin puppets, you could get a APY of 220%. On node monkeys, it's 120%. Uh, Bitcoin frogs, 220. Runestone and R6 are 220. Prometheans, 250. So like this, that's like one I wouldn't want to do as an example, but just to, to let you know. And then also they break down the node monkeys and the OMBs by the different color eyes and also the gold and the aliens. So you could even get... You get like a lower APY on that, but that that's another one where the um, I guess the bid the bid offer amount is way less than I guess the floor of that trait. So if someone were to borrow off of that and default, that's like a windfall right there, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely look into it. I think this is probably one of the runes that actually has real utility and and real a real use case that's like being used right now. Yeah, so far we've seen the runes that have utility associated with them kind of come and go. I know Bank did really well in terms of sort of holding the line of around that 100 million market cap. I know it's slightly below that, but that's done very well. Uh, we've seen some of the other ones about the programmable runes. Not too much have come out of those. I know those have fallen from uh, sort of their all-time highs, still up a lot from the mint, uh, but have definitely fallen a decent bit. Um, but yeah, this one seems very intriguing. It really launched itself up on the leaderboard pretty quickly there to the sixth spot. So I definitely want to dig into that, but I see a ton of volume. It looks like it has uh, the top daily volume of any rune with nine Bitcoin today. Uh, and I could definitely see a ton of volume with that sticking around if a lot of people continue to use that uh, protocol. I mean, it also should provide a lot of liquidity just for the ordinal space where even if stuff sells below the floor, you're still getting some decent sales there. So hopefully that does help to establish price. And maybe in a couple of weeks, something like that could help to raise ordinal floors higher. Yeah, I mean, this this one looks really good to me. Again, it's like a real use case that's actually in play right now. It's, it's kind of like a, a mesh of both runes and also ordinals. So you get you're interacting with with both. Um, so yeah, I, I do, I do like this. There's been a, a lot of, uh, people in, in the ORDS, uh, thread been farming this, this token for quite a while and doing really well. So I just was a little bit late to it. I, I was, I was aware of it, but just a, just a little pr procrastination on my side to finally, but I finally got into it. And, uh, by the way, if you're holding like a pop certain collections, like a puppets and, or a ninja, and there's some other ones like OMBs, if you, if you're holding any one of those collections, you also received, uh, a liquidity um, token airdrop as well today. Oh, that's awesome. That's so sick.
But yeah, I think that's kind of it on my end, Waf. I haven't had too much. I'd say overall, it's just been a very touch grass week. We've had some major headlines in crypto, so just kind of watching the price go up and down. Um, but I really haven't made any big moves either way. You know, I know we spent the past couple of weeks just talking about conviction plays, and I'm pretty much consolidated into the stuff I believe in. Psycho Hamster is my big uh, speculative play, not doing so hot. It's down about 50%. I'm uh, just going to chill on that one since it is such a market cap, small market cap. And other than that, you know, it's just been wizard for me. But anything else that's been catching your eye in terms of ordinals or runes that you've been thinking, hey, this is a new emerging rune. I know we just talked about liquidium. Uh, anything else really going off on your radar? Not really. I just been kind of keeping my eye to, um, on some of like the rune mints that are trending, and then just trying to like see if there's socials, and maybe I'll just do a few low risk degen mints. I mean, Sats have been like five, six, seven, even lower. So, so sometimes it, it's only costing me like like ten bucks to actually mint. So I'm taking shots at some degen mints. Maybe I get like a two x, three x on a quick flip on on something like that. Um, I haven't really added any other runes this past week. I did buy some ordinals. Um, I had mentioned to you I bought that collection commoners. I just saw like the floor was um, low and it was getting swept a lot. So I kind of got some of those just to hold, I guess, a little bit long term. I did get into Aeons. I bought a few additional ones on secondary, um, pretty much around the same price that we're at right now. Um, I think that's kind of going into the mid to long term bag. And that that's about it. Just kind of stacking BTC really right now. Nice, man. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a great time to stack BTC. We hope we can start seeing some BTC multiples at least a little bit more easily uh, as runes and ordinals can heat up again. You know, I think once those market gets hot, it's just a phenomenal chance to multiply. But in terms of just you know, where the risk reward is at. It seems like just holding Bitcoin straight up right now has a lot of value and a lot of upside is anticipated. So it's not really too surprising to see some of those other markets cool down a little bit. Um, it can be a little discouraging, obviously, with stuff like Solana and ETH just ripping. Um, but, you know, as always, we just talked about ease of use. These are still emerging markets, at least on runes and ordinals. So it's going to take some time to catch up. Uh, but as always, Waf, just really appreciate you being glued in and sharing any uh, alpha we have in the market. I really got to look more into this liquidium stuff and then come back next week with some uh, some plays of my own. But um, yeah, if there's nothing else, we could probably wrap this one up for a, a quick episode this week. Yeah, the only other thing I would say is I kind of looked at what's minting the next two weeks. It looks, it looks pretty non-eventful, so no nothing really to talk about in terms of upcoming mints. I don't know if anyone in the chat has any questions. I mean, feel free to drop it. And uh, if not, I guess I guess we'll uh, have back to back uh, shorter, shorter um, episodes, although la last week was um, unintentional. Yeah, <laughs> last week's unintentional. Uh, is everything all right on that front, by the way? Wanted to follow up on that. Oh, uh, yeah, she's she's all good. She had a fever, but it's fine. She's fine. Great. Now, I'm glad to hear. Uh, I do have one final shout, actually, to wrap up the episode is anyone listening right now, we are having an MVHQ birthday celebration Wednesday. Uh, you're going to see some announcements on our Twitter as well as the MVHQ server. So just keep an eye out on that. We're turning the three. It's going to be a ton of fun. We're going to have just a lot of games throughout, huge prize payout for the poker tournament, uh, as well as some prize payout for some other games that are going to be announced. But yeah, I mean, it, it's really going to be a ton of fun. It's going to have a you know VC throughout. So just um, kick back with your favorite MVHQ members and we'll celebrate uh, turning three years old. It's going to be sick. Awesome. Uh, we'll see everybody there on the anniversary shout. Awesome. Yeah, appreciate it, Wef. As always, man, a pleasure hosting with you. Uh, appreciate your Bitcoin knowledge as always. And we're going to have a lot to talk about next week following this Bitcoin uh, conference. But until next time, man, take it easy. I'll, I'll see you next time. Peace.